Verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is one verse that came forth from the mouth of John. As uh, this, but this is by the Holy Spirit, and it is the Word of God for us today, whom we read and study, and which we listen. Thus, God has loved us. Thus, it means with this way. That's what it means. A very well-known verse in the Gospel of John, it says that God loved so much the world. And in the old te uh, text, it says that thus he loved his, uh, the world, so that he who believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And again, the Word of God uses this word thus, that is, in this manner. And God wants through the Bible, brethren, because through the Bible, if we study, if we pay attention, we will find treasures eternal, which cannot appreciate it. And the Word of God wants to reveal to us which are these manners and the ways with, with which God the Father, through Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit, He has loved us. With what way did He love us? I might say to someone that I love you, but this might not mean anything to that person. But when God says that I love you, then this means a lot of things. And these things we will study them through the Word of God this night. But this verse doesn't stop there. The, but we also to love one another. And, and here we see, we see two situations. From the one hand, we become, um, we accept the love of God. And the question is, do we receive the love of God? This is very important because the love of God is always poured out um, into men. But there is also my own responsibility, the responsibility of a Christian man, if he receives this love. So from the one hand, I uh, become a receiver of this love. And from the other hand, since I accept and receive this love, then this love with which the Lord has filled me, I have to give it back to my brothers. Can I give the love that I have in my heart to my brothers and sisters without uh, being a receiver from the love of God? No, I can't do this. It's essential that I may receive the love of God. I have to comprehend this. I have to believe it. It's, and it's not just a matter of faith, as I said, but it's a matter um, of, of belief and of uh, being in communication with God every day. And God loves me with these and the other way. And today, with the grace of Christ, we will search out um, in the Bible, to find these ways, which at least I have uh, recollected from the Bible, uh, how God loves us and how He shows it to us, so that, first of all, we may um, see these examples and, and uh, sprung ro roots um, uh, close to God. When I know that God loves me, then I will, stay, I will cling to Him, and I will receive this love and the example of God, um, that he did to me, uh, then I can give it to my brothers and sisters. But I want to stop first, before I continue, um, to the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son, uh, at some point, he left from the house of his father. And when he went to the far land, then there he came to his senses, and he remembered, uh, see what he remembered. He remembered he, the servants, uh, who enjoyed in the house of his father the food and the wine, how they enjoyed all the goods in his father's house. It is very important, brethren, that he didn't uh, remember himself enjoying these good, but, goods, but he remembered all the others. And it is very serious because I believe that this was the reason that he left from the house of the father and from the church. He didn't enjoy the love of God. He didn't enjoy the love of the father. Of course, he remembered that all the others enjoyed this love. 
perhaps he listened to testimonies um, from an early age. He used to hear how good God was. Wasn't God good toward him? Of course, uh, God was good toward him, but he didn't become a receiver of that. And there is a, as a result of this, this made him um, to go away from the fa house of the father. Uh, but again, the elder brother who stayed in the house of the father, he didn't also receive the love of God. And the love of God was so abundant in the house of the father. The servants enjoyed it, but the sons didn't, do, didn't enjoy this love. And for this reason, the elder brother um, acted harshly when he saw his brother to come back. He didn't have this love in his heart. He, uh, he hadn't uh, laid in his heart. He, he wasn't filled with the love of the Father so that he could give it back. For this reason, brethren, it is very important. Um, the little children and the older um, people, especially the children that are brought up in the church, to learn from an early age to have experiences with Christ to become uh, partakers of the love of God in their life. That it is very serious that God loves you and He shows it in your life because if a man comes to the church and he approaches God for any other reason, eventually he will not stay. And even if he'll stay, then uh, this uh, won't have an effect in his life and he will uh, be from those who will be left back because uh, in his heart won't be um, poured out the love of God. And I would like to remind you another part in the Bible, though there was a servant who, um, who the Lord gave um, a talent to the servants. Uh, there was one who took one talent and he took it and hid it in the, uh, in, the, in the earth. And when the Lord came back to ask an account from his servants, then what did this man have to say? It, it's a terrible. The words that he said, it's terrible. I know that you are a harsh um, servant, a harsh master. So what was his opinion about God? That God was uh, harsh, that he was an oppressor, though God is not like that. And through the Bible and through our experiences and through in our Christian life, we see that God is not like that. But why did that man act it in this way and he, he spoke these words to God? Because as I understood it, uh, dear brethren, as I was praying um, in the evening, when people do not accept the word of truth and the word of love of God to be saved, but they turn themselves in deception and in lie, then when on that day they will stand before the judgment seat of Christ, who is the word of God, then they will understand what they were reading and that this, and they used to say that this word they harsh, we don't accept it, we will change it. And then they will say and they will testify that you were harsh because they will see right before um, them the word of God as, as a person, though the, their whole life they used to see him through the Bible. And of course, then they will repent, but it will be late. But for us, brethren, today, who will listen to the Word of God and study the Word of God, it will be good for us to pay attention on how God loves us so that this may become an experience and um, faith and um, in our life and this love with which God will fill us and with, we, with this ways we should give it back to our brothers and sisters and of course, of course to the people that are around us. The first element that I would like us to see this is the proof of the love of God, how God shows His love. To say to someone that I love you, as we said before, it's very easy. And it's very easy to, to say to someone whom I don't see very often, and, and he might be far away, I love you. I, I say this being far uh, away from him. But the truth is that love has labor and love and has sacrificed. We see these two things in the Bible in two parts. In the episode to the Thessalonians, it says that um, by honoring the Thessalonians, it says uh, he's talking about uh, the labor of your love. Uh, so love has labor. Someone labors. When someone tells me that I love you and I see that he labors for me to minister to me, I know that he loves me. 
in another place in, in the Epistle to the Ephesians, it says about the man how he owes to love his wife by sacrificing himself. So, love has labor and sacrifice. God. Was he sacrificed for us? Yes, indeed he was. And he sacrificed himself on the cross of Golgotha. This was the first sacrifice, the most important sacrifice which God did for us. And we, um, uh, while being sinful, he, yet he uh, gave his only begotten son to be sacrificed on the cross of Golgotha. And behold, this is his sacrifice. And his sacrifice is given, brethren. And God comes through his grace, through his mercy, every Sunday to remind us this sacrifice of his. We receive the the blood and body of Christ for uh, various reasons. One of these is um, unto his remembrance. Isn't this that the word of God says we remember his sacrifice. So in that, in that moment that we hold the, the, uh, the bread and the wine, which is the blood and body of Christ, we remember his sacrifice. Th that is, we remember his love. His love, that God has loved us. First, he loved us and he gave his son to be crucified for us. A brother um, from the youth um, had seen a vision or a dream. I don't remember exactly what it was. So he saw that um, a great fire was coming against him. It was a really great fire, which it was impossible for him to avoid it. Uh, the emotions that he felt at that moment were so strong that he, that he was thinking that I'm burned, I'm completely burned. So a huge hand took him away from this scene that he um, was looking and on his place um, was put a lamp. And that's exactly what the sacrifice is. He, he came into our place and he was sacrificed for us. And his labor, brethren, is to bring us to the church. Uh, his labor all these years of our, of our life is that he labored as when he was in the flesh here on the earth and he um, uh, approached the the weak, the sinful and the, um, the Samaritan women. He labored to approach them and that's what he does also in, in the prayer that he does. He, he labors in, by the Holy Spirit so that he may bring us to the path of God, his own path. Paul in another place he says, and of course, behind this is the Holy Spirit. He says that I'm in labor till Christ will be formed within you. That's what he says to the believers. And if Paul is in labor, in pain, in anxiety, and so that Christ would be formed within me and within you, then how much more God labors and he's striving in our daily life to bring us to the point uh, that we ought to be. So um, the proof of his love is given, and that is his sacrifice and the labor, and labor, and the labor. And I would like to say something else. Many times we say that I love you, but we don't show it. Okay, you love me, but how um, can you show this to me? Um, but again, other times, there might be someone who indeed labors and loves, but this might not be accepted from the other. He might not see it. So the Word of God says that God loves us so much. I can find it, but anyway, God loves us so much, and He exhorts us to continue in His love. I found it. As um, my Father has loved me, I have loved you. Um, continue in my love. Now take heed. God reveals to us His love through the sacrifice of Christ and through the labor of Christ. And uh, this love is given. But we do we stay in this love? The love of God is given, but we will stay in this love. The prodigal son didn't stay. We call him the prodigal son, but for God, he was a dead son. He said that my the, my son was dead. So will I pursue the love of God? Will I seek it? Will I approach God so that I may see how much God loves me? Because this is our, our step um, that we ought to do, to approach God, to know him so that his love may be revealed to us. So God 
uh, wants us to say in this love that he pours into ours and he also has uh, compassion in our weaknesses he became man brethren he humbled himself and we see that God in uh, that being in the form of God he didn't consider himself to be equal with God but he emptied himself he emptied himself from the glory that he had um, in heaven by receiving the form of man and becoming like man and as he was found in the form of man he humbled himself becoming obedient to the point of death uh, death of the cross so um, Jesus Christ emptied himself he took the glory um, and he he humbled himself, and that's how we'll do while approaching our brother. In order to humble myself in my relationship with my brother, first of all, I have to empty myself. I have to empty myself before humility comes. I have to empty myself from my glory, from my pride, from my um, selfishness, uh, from the perception that I'm something, and I, uh, then I'll be able to humble myself and approach my brother exactly as God did. He emptied himself from his glory. Uh, he didn't empty him from his um, uh, divine nature. He received the form um, of man. He humbled himself even more by becoming obedient. So the example of God, of Christ, um, uh, showing his love is that he emptied himself and so that with this way we may approach and love our brothers. A second characteristic which I have found is the acceptance of our um, personality as children of God from God himself, no matter how righteous we are before him. So the love of God does not depend on how good we make it. For example, I have two children, and for example, uh, one of my children goes well in his studies. The one is obedient, he, he uh, listens to us, but the other child doesn't listen to me at all, for example. Now, what happens in this um, case, does my love um, become less for this child? Rather, I would be more careful toward him so that he may come to what I tell him. But many times we forget the, this thing and uh, first of all about ourselves and we think that God doesn't love loves us when we fall into mistakes and instead of taking the path of, um, of repentance which is the path of the love of God and approach him again we stay away from the face of God and um, Followingly from the love of God, and we think that God doesn't love us. Yet, brethren, God, through the Bible and through His Word, tells us a different thing: that He has loved us while we uh, were still sinners. We were sinners, and um, yet He loved us. And even if we still fall in sin, He still loves us. Then what should we do? So whether we we may continue in sin and order God to love us? No, but the love of God is the one that will uh, draw us close to Him. Repentance, and um, when we return back, and uh, this is that will um, get us to Him. Uh, once I was uh, at work and something bad came out from my mouth and I was very um, sorrowed, and I said, Lord, I messed it up. I messed it up, and I've done this again, and I said to myself, and I was grounded. And I thought, Lord, how have I um, messed things up? And as I, I was walking in the corridor, it is as if I heard the voice, I believe it was the Holy Spirit, said to me, lift up your head. I love you. And at that moment, I thought, I have God who accepts me. Uh, I've messed things up again, but uh, I will go to my God and my Father. And I said, Lord, forgive me. And at that moment, um, peace came into my heart. So God was waiting for me, um, my repentance. Just one simple word from my heart, 
Lord, I've messed things up. I repent and I come back to you. But it's it's granted that God loves us even when we fall and um, when we make it. But now let us see our relationship with our brothers and sisters. Is it that we expect that our brothers and sisters uh, be perfect, that they do everything uh, right and make no mistakes so that we may um, um, love them? Or do we um, separate our brothers and say that these are obedient, these are not, I will love this and uh, all the rest, I will put them aside. No, this is not how the love of uh, the Father is. Of course, as we see further down, the, uh, the man of God does not love uh, sin, but he loves the sinner. And that's what God does. God doesn't love my sin. He abhors it, abhors it. And when I commit my sin, then God is abhorred of this sin. And this is something which we ought to remember. But um, me and you, he continues to love us. He continues um, and accepts us. And uh, through the example of the prodigal son, brethren, the God and the Father was daily at the door of his house and he was expecting for the prodigal son to come back. He didn't go in the far land to find him, but he was waiting for him daily. And why am I saying this? Um, because it says that when he was coming back, he saw him from afar, which means that um, uh, God, uh, in your fall and in your sin, he um, looks at you and he's waiting for you to make the decision to return. When you make this decision to return and repent, even before you approach him, even when you be far off, he has already done the first step and he's running towards you to, to embrace you. And he embraces you and he kisses you. And when this thing happened, that I, uh, um, I fell on that sin and God was merciful toward me, after a while something happened at work and I understood that it was the hand of God. He helped me in a difficulty that I had at work and I prayed and God answered me right away. And I thought, God, how good you are how benign you are. So you didn't expect me to be perfect in order to help me, isn't it so, brethren? So luckily we should um, um, act toward our brothers, to those who are weak in faith. You should accept those uh, that, are, uh, that have weak faith and not strive against them. If someone is weak and he in faith and does not understand, do not force him to understand him. For example, there was a brother who was uh, young in faith, and on one Sunday he had come in the church, and on that day some other um, people had come, and that brother um, thought that it was good to go to one of these girls and and um, force them to put the covering on their head. But she said, no, I don't want it. Don't you see all around um, the others? You have to put a covering. But this um, a girl, uh, he, she laid the covering. But this um, girl t told me um, with a fearful um, look, I don't want to do this. Now, we won't strive with people, with a young person who hasn't understood something, but we will accept all as God accepts his brethren. So we have to accept um, every person without um, conditions. A third characteristic, which I consider it, it to be very serious, it's the appreciation that God has. He honors us, brethren. God honors us. In the Bible, many times we see uh, um, when God speaks to the churches in the book of Revelation, He honors the angels of the churches. He honors people, even um, to the churches uh, that didn't walk well. For example, in the church of Smyrna, who said that I have something against you. Before that, first of all, He honored this man. He spoke to him and told him that you have this and that. I know that you labor, that you strive. I know this um, and how many times doesn't God come to speak into our life um, and He wants to exhort us and rebukes us for, uh, rebuke us for something? Uh, beforehand, he, he honors us. 
and he honors us through his word. So it is very important that we may honor our brothers and sisters. Honor um, um, others, and of course this is not flattering. We shouldn't flatter one another. The flattering is a sin, as the word of God says. It says that we didn't use the word of flattering, as Paul says, but um, we should honor our brothers and sisters with works, with works of love, um, or even with words which are true. When you see someone who labors, for example, will you not honor him? You will honor him because he labors. Either he labors in the word of God or because he cleans, uh, cleans, the, the cleanses. Uh, you will honor him. You should pray for him. And that's the same thing that God does to us. In the, to the churches, many times the Apostle Paul says, for example, to, in the Epistle to the Romans, first of all, I thank my God uh, through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is preached uh, through the whole world. So uh, the Apostle Paul starts this episode with a praise which is true. Uh, again, to the Corinthians, which we have to point out that the Corinthians didn't have few problems. They had a, a sinful man in their uh, church. They didn't have unity. Yet the Apostle Paul starts his episode by saying, I thank God always for you. Here, uh, listen what he's saying. I thank God always for you. I thank God for uh, the brethren. And we, brethren, when we go in prayer and pray for the brethren, do we thank God for our um, brethren? Because through our brothers and sisters, we see uh, the Lord. We see Christ uh, in the faces of our brothers and sisters. A brother had said at some point when he came into the church, I, I, I didn't see any um, images, uh, pictures of uh, saint peoples. And someone told him that the church is full of uh, um, pictures. Look at um, the brothers. Um, so behold... The pictures. The Church of Christ is full of the faces of our uh, brothers and sisters, in which we can see the uh, image of Christ. I would like also to say something else. The Bible says and emphasizes, and and it gives praise to the people who were from the beginning. It says. Um, Praise Epenetus, my beloved, who was from the beginning in Achaia, in Christ. So those who started the work of God, those who started with the church, those who labored and we find this work ready, God gives a special praise to them. How much more we, um, as people of God, we are in the Church of Christ. A fourth characteristic of the love of God, brethren, toward us, is um, how God approaches us, how God um, gains us through this approach that He does. And, and um, an example is how Christ approached the Samaritan woman, a woman who was sinful, just one sinful woman, who was the most sinful woman of that territory, though Christ um, was hungry and tired because they hadn't eaten, as the Word of God reveals to us. He preferred to make the disciples to go and get food and stay alone and that um, and approach a sinful woman and we can um, place ourselves and that woman um, and remember us how Christ approached us and how he continues to approach us he doesn't try to take his word as a dry word and put it into our heart but first of all he wants to gain us with his love and he wants to approach us so he turned to the Samaritan woman and he said will you give me some water to drink was this an approach of love I would rather see it as an approach of uh, slavery but 
if we get into that um, period, we will see that it was an approach of law because the Israelites didn't speak to the Samaritans. They were in, they had a religious enmity and they didn't speak um, how much more a, a Jew uh, a Jew uh, to speak to a Samaritan woman. So the fact that he spoke to her, he gained her. We were, would say that he approached her. He made her to pay attention to his words. And that's what God does daily in our lives. He gains us with some um, works that he does. And if we are m uh, more careful, careful, then he will gain us with his love. And then the words that will come into our ears, which is the word of God and in which we have to obey, they will be um, more acceptable from us. When the moment came to tell her that you have five um, men and the one you had five men and the one that you have now it's not yours, if he would told her, he had told her that from the beginning, most probably she would have left. But because um, he gained her with his delicacy and his wisdom, then the word of God became acceptable that he spoke to her, though. He rebuked her, but it was a true word because she, this Samaritan woman had to come to repentance in order to be saved in the end. Because it's not just love that matters, but also truth. And of course, God approaches us with his love, but eventually what will save us through his love is the truth um, of the gospel. Uh, but of course, we have to do the same thing and approach our brothers and sisters and sisters with delicacy, all of them. When a brother, for example, comes and he gives us um, a plate of food downstairs, how do I um, approach him, for example, uh, and go and take uh, the plate of the... Do I consider that he is my servant? But do I approach my brother with delicacy and with love so that afterwards I may be able to become partaker in his problem, to become partaker in the words that I will tell him or that he will tell me. This is very important, brethren, um, to have a delicate um, conduct towards others. And I believe that uh, the next thing is the, the relationships of affection that God has toward us which we enjoy when we go into our chamber of prayer and not just there but also in the church and in general when we approach Christ. When the Lord was here uh, on this earth and in his flesh, he could uh, embrace others and he could kiss, he could embrace the children and he didn't despise uh, the children, though others despised them, he embraced them and he also embraced uh, older people. Those who want to be embraced by him, uh, approach him. John used to, to lean on um, um, and the, uh, and the embrace of Christ. And that's how it is today. I can go uh, toward Christ so that he may embrace me. And it's important to experience this thing into um, our chamber of prayer where we get to study the Word of God when we hear the Word of God then God can, comes to embrace us and take care of us. And likewise, we should do to our brothers. It says in the Bible that we should kiss one another with a holy kiss. We should greet the brethren. We should approach them with a, um, the shake of our hand. How much more with our words we can, can follow after that. These are very nice examples, brethren, which Christ um, gives us. And also the first disciples did, and the Church of Christ used to be filled with the love of God. Of course, all these things, brethren, which uh, we're reading, the acceptance of love, these are verses that are taken um, through the chapter of love. If we see that love uh, does not seek her own things, all these verses, it's exactly that thing. 
It describes the love of God toward us and, of course, the love which we owe to, to give to others. And the last thing which I have um, is the boundaries that God puts. God loves us, but He also puts limits because the limits that God puts and it's nothing else um, than His Word, it's an expression of His love. And it's not the expression of His strictness. And if in my heart to consider the Word of God to be strict, then I'm wrong, brethren. And I'm very close to, to backslide. But if I consider the Word of God good and ready to uh, defy me and change me and that I'm wrong and not the Word of God, then I'm indeed in the path that God wants me to be. So it was said before, God loves the sinner and He loves him very much. But He doesn't love sin. And this is granted, brethren, in the Bible. God sent His Son and He had loved us. He has loved us and He sent His Word so that He may guide us. He didn't um, leave us um, uncontrolled and I love you and do whatever you want because he knows that without way we won't be able to be saved it is as if I, I say to my children go out in the winter time and do not wear any coat go out I love you very much but brother the children will get sick yes I love them very much and I let them do whatever they want is this a proof of love? of course not that's how God is and for this reason, the Word of God mentions in the Word of God that those whom I love, I, I strive and I, I train. And many times we get this in the wrong way, but this is a training that God does in us. It, when the Holy Spirit um, rebukes us, not just the Word, but also us, doesn't the Holy Spirit rebuke us in our life? This is a proof of the love of God. This is a proof that my child, you do not walk well. That's the right way, not from the other, um, the other way. And there are churches that have walked only with love, and they never speak about limits and, and about. Um, and indeed, they have lost their limits, and they are, uh, have. They are lost in worldliness. There are other churches that have only the Word of God and they do not have um, the love that comes by the Holy Spirit, the God the love um, of the love of, of the Father. And they have ended up to be churches which consist of teachers and, and law givers. But the truth is that when um, the Lord approached the woman uh, who were caught up in adultery and all the others were ready to stone her and God delivered her. Um, let's, let's pay attention what Christ told her, which is one word, but it's for us the whole gospel. Uh, Neither do I condemn you. The love of Christ. We see the love of Christ. Neither do I um, condemn you, which was uh, we ha which had the uh, the authority to condemn him. Go and sin no more. And behold, this is the, the truth of the gospel. And this truth of the gospel, um, sin no more, it's a proof of the love of God. Because God loves that through sin, we will draw away from God, from the love of God. But knowing the limits that the Word of God puts, then we will be safe. Um, I would like to, to share with you something that happened when my son um, was young. I remember that uh, the, what happened was the following. So we were about to come to the church and after I came back from work, I was uh, shaving and we had uh, laid um, um, my son on the, ta on the bed. And all of a sudden, I heard a noise, and the child had gone down from the bed. It was our first child, and this was the first time that happened. So as I heard this noise, I, I left from the bathroom as I was, and, I, and the child was crying. 
And of course, I, I took him and I embraced him. But I embraced him so tight, and with his, uh, with I was searching to find whether he was bleeding somewhere or anything. For for ten minutes, I was, and uh, my son was crying intensely. Anyway, when I realized that the he was fine, so I left to go to the bath, and I continued sh shaving. And then God came and told me, as you embraced your child, that's how I want you to embrace my children in the church. And then my heart broke. But you'll tell me, did you make it? Uh, of course, uh, we, don't, uh, we can make it on our own, but we ask help from God. And when we ask help from God, then indeed we make it because God comes and helps us. But it's good that we may remember how God loves us. First of all, so that we may um, be steady and remember how He loves us and remember to continue in His love, to have the love and the truth. And from the other hand, this love that God gives us and He reveals to us, if He does so, then we should give it back to our brothers. And that's the love that we will give to our brothers, uh, to our, the people in our environment. And because of our love, they will see and understand that indeed you are truly um, uh, disciples and they will see your good work. May the Lord bless us.